Matthew here from the Mini Wargaming Forge. I got a fun video right here. How would you like to print three times faster with your resin printers? Well, I wanna show you what James did in order to achieve that with our printers now. Let's go take a look. Say hi, James. Hey. So, right here we have our three frozen Sonic Mighty 8Ks. And uh, we've been printing like mad for like Ravage Star and other stuff, and we still have a lot of stuff to print. But what I really want to do is experiment with them, so on different resins and different methods, so that we can find the perfect everything for you for making miniatures. That's what our goal is, because we want to be able to print and sell miniatures, but we want them to be just the highest quality possible that you can achieve with prosumer level 3D printers. So we have a printer working on different types of resins that you're doing all sorts of different things, but we're going to make a different video about that. But more importantly, I was just talking to James because this printer is now printing three times as quickly as it was before. Now I'm wearing the mic, so nice and loud, James. Why don't you walk us through the process of what you did in order to achieve that? Okay, uh, well, uh, basically the, the NFEP that was on there uh, had a puncture or something and there was a leak. So that's the sheet that goes in the bottom of the vat. Yeah. Uh, so we had to change it out and we decided now would be a good time while we're changing it to put the ACF in. So can we, do we have some of that ACF that we can show them? So we're using all these letters, but basically what is ACF? Do you know off the top of your head ACF versus FEP? Uh, I don't know what they mean. We know what they do differently, Yeah. but we don't know what they stand for because <laughs> we're super technical like that. Oh yeah, there's all our stuff. Is there anything secret on there that I'm not allowed to see? Uh, no, we're good. I don't have to edit that out. Okay, good. A little behind the scenes there. So basically, the difference with the ACF is that it releases yeah. easier. So when the, if this is the sort of the, the clear sheet at the bottom of the printer, when the build plate comes down and you cure the resin, when the build plate comes back up, it kind of pulls a little bit and the whole thing snaps back down. So the ACF is supposed to snap and pull less supposed to peel off much So it doesn't laser. stick as easy to the fill. It doesn't stick as easy, so which means you have to, you spend less time waiting for the resin to settle back down again before you can come back in. It also means that the plate can go back up quickly. Yes, the plate can move faster because you're not worried about ripping your resin off the gold plate because it doesn't stick to the ACF as much. Uh, it doesn't snap as much, so the resin doesn't need to settle as much. So you can, basically your build plate can move up and down much quicker, cutting your printing time down at least three times as so we found some limitations because Frozen claims it'll be six times as fast, but they also said that that's with a firmware update that they promised back in June. It's September now, late <laughs> September. And we were about to check, but in the past couple weeks, I know like a couple weeks ago, that firmware update still wasn't there. Yeah. And the reason for that is because you go, so let's go over to Cheetah Box. I'm going to just pause it and get that set, started up here. So here's our super uh, high level screen gap software, screen grab software. <laughs> so. You've got the regular profile. So Cheetah Box obviously is what we are using for the Frozens. And it's great, it works great. And so we have all of these different numbers that most of them you never think about. The ones that you probably dial in the most are your exposure time and maybe your bottom exposure time. And you don't really think about the rest of them. So, but the other numbers are actually what makes a huge difference. You might think, well, if I can get that exposure time down, that from 1.8 seconds to 1.6 or 1.4, if you have a thousand layers, yeah, you're gonna save a few minutes because it really doesn't add up to much. But what is really the difference is over here. So we look at the primarily the retract speeds and the lift speeds. So those last four numbers that I'm not showing you because I realized I wasn't pointing at them. There we are, those last four numbers. So remember that 60, 60, 150, 150. Now switch over to the ACF profile and we've got 600, 600, 600, 600. In other words, it just flies up. That's how many millimeters per minute it moves. So it's the speed, basically. And we still, because we still have an exposure of 1.8 and the bottom exposure of 45, maybe we could adjust that, but you did already the cones of calibration mm -hmm. where you print off these bad boys and you're trying to figure out exactly how to get them to line up properly. That's how you do this. Well, we can talk about that in another video. And, uh, the rest time after retract, is that a big difference too? It was four seconds. It was four oh. seconds and now it's 0.5. So essentially if I can give you a super high level demonstration right here, pretend my hand is the build plate. So we go down and I'm sorry, this is not meant to be like patronizing. I just want to really show it and my hand is just what I have handy. Uh -huh. 
anyways, so it goes down. The speed that it goes down, that is the, uh, the lifting speed, right? And the retracting, or whatever, the, the speeds. And then it stays down there for the 1.8 seconds while it gets hit with the UV light. And then it retracts at a certain speed. In this case, we're going from like 150 to 600 millimeters per minute. So it's instead of just retracting slowly so that it has time to disconnect from the bottom, it retracts quickly. And the amount of time that it rests after it retracts, so when it retracts, you have to give time for the resin to come back in. This is my big PowerPoint presentation. The resin coming back in. But here, because it retracts quicker, it doesn't need to wait as long for the resin to get back in. And I think also probably there might be like a, a non-stick factor that lets the resin pour back in faster too, which makes sense, but I'm just making that part up, so I don't know if that's the case. So let's go take a look at it, and you can kind of see it in action right now. So if we come back here, we have both printers are currently printing. So here's one that's just doing some testing with some different resin at the normal speeds that you saw before. And you can kind of watch it come up a little bit, and it sees, you can get a feel for how fast the plate is moving up and down. So it's just kind of like this slow, gentle pull up. So we'll wait a few seconds. There it goes, pulling up. It waits. Oh no, it's not even done pulling up. It's still pulling up. Okay, it waits and it goes back down. Okay, now let's come over to this one that is currently in and we can kind of watch and you can see that its speed is much higher. It might be hard to pick it out, but yeah, there, you can, you can watch it. It's definitely going faster. Now the speeds that uh, James put in there, the 600, it's what Frozen says that we can do, but they said with a firmware update, which we haven't done yet. So these are not printing six times as fast, they're printing three times as fast, even though the software says it'll be six times as fast. So we believe that's because the firmware has not been updated and there's probably a speed limit cap in the firmware itself because it's like, you never wanna go faster than this, it's not good, so we're not gonna let you do it even though the machine obviously is capable of going faster. But just look at that go up and down, see how fast it's moving. So it can do each layer three times faster. There we go, we're the same height now. Or just, I'll just turn it like this, there we are. Not disorienting at all. Um, so anyways, so that's three times faster, and it didn't take you long to dial it all in, right? You just did the cones of calibration, which if you're wondering, I'll, I'll put a link in the description to the cones of calibration. It's a, a file you print, and essentially you have to dial in your your speeds, your, sorry, your um, exposure time, so that, here's, here's your quick tutorial. Oh, this one's still wet. All right, do you have one that's not covered in resin? Just the, yeah. Just the one that was on the thing. It's got some resin on my finger. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm gonna wash my hands right after this, obviously. And so essentially what it does is it prints these cones, and the goal is on the one side that says success, you want the cones to be touching, and on the side that says failure, you want them all to not be touching. So if there's any on the failure side that are touching, you're overexposing, and if there's any on the success side that aren't touching, you're underexposing. And so then you adjust, you print it again, until you get only successes and only failures. It's actually genius. Whoever came up with that is genius. I'll put a link in the description. Also, I'll put a link to getting a frozen Sonic Mighty 8K. It'll be an affiliate link, so I'll get a bit of a commission. But these printers are awesome. And I'll make sure I'll include a link to get the ACF from the ACF filament or film from Frozen as well. So that you can, because uh, you can buy, they're not that expensive to replace. I think it was like 30 or $40 for three of them. So you can have replacements. Like we bought obviously one for each and we'll be replacing the rest of them for sure. For sure, because we want all our printers printing three times faster. Isn't that crazy? Anyways, that's the video for today. Um, let me know your, any questions that you have in the comments below. I'll try to reply or I'll make a new video if it's something that enough people are asking for. But uh, yeah, till then. Happy 3D printing.